what luck does your, uh, what role does luck play in your job search? Hey everyone, it's Emily, the career catalyst. This week we've been talking about a bit about luck in your job search and kind of how you can make your own luck. Now, in career circles, we call this planned happenstance because, of course, we have to have our own sort of jargon for it. And so what I really want to talk about today is setting some goals for yourself and taking steps so that you are really sure that you are getting to your goals. What does that look like? Well, what I do and what may be helpful to you is I use a whiteboard. And you'll see here, this is my whiteboard for this week. You'll see that I have some stuff on there, like my haircut, um, that is not specifically work related. Now, I do that because that allows me to kind of conceptualize every single thing I have going on for the week outside of my regular appointments and things like that. I like the whiteboard because it's very easy to edit it, to erase it things when I need to. Uh, and I like that I can stick it kind of directly in my eyeline so that I know what my goals are for that week. If you have larger goals for yourself, then you can also uh, have a secondary board. It can be, you know, a notepad, something like that. But what you'll want to do is make sure that you have a place to write that down and that it's someplace that you can access pretty easily so that you have that nice little set of visual cues. Here's why that's important. If you're anything like me, when you have bigger goals for yourself, you sort of put the general sort of set of tasks for yourself maybe on your calendar, but you're very unspecific about it. You'll put like project or something like that in the calendar. And the problem is you will find plenty of things to do during that time. And the project is gonna get pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. And then, you know, it's three months after you intended to do your project and you've really done very little. So instead, what you can do is get very specific. So you'll see that I had some things there on my whiteboard that included things like writing my blog for the week. Uh, and that's because if I don't have it there visually in front of me, then when I have like a half hour between clients or whatever, I might just not do it. So I need to have that visual and I can see it. It's right at the top of my computer. So it's right there, it's underneath my ring light. I see it even when I'm not trying to. And that gives me that nice little visual cue that that is something I need to do when I have time for it. So instead of using any of those small breaks in my day to do things like get a snack or let the dogs out or whatever, I have that reminder to prioritize a task that I need to get done. Now, again, for those bigger tasks, you'll want similar kind of setup. You'll want something that is easy to see uh, so that you have it kind of, at least in the periphery of your vision, you get that reminder that you need to do it. But, and here's the big trick, you're going to want to break that down into smaller tasks. Because again, project gets pushed back and nothing gets accomplished. So I recommend that you start with an easy piece of it. Let's say you have uh, a project to um, look for a new job, right? Big deal huge time suck, a lot of frustration that goes in with that. And if you just have job search on your calendar periodically, um, or if you have a work calendar, it's probably not in there. So you might have it on a personal calendar. What is going to happen is you're going to think, yeah, I should probably do that. And you'll hop over onto Indeed and you look at some jobs and you'll feel overwhelmed and tired. And you'll, you know, take a break and go get some coffee instead. Those breaks are fine. I don't want to say that you shouldn't take them, but put in some very particular actions you can take to move your job search forward and you'll start really seeing some momentum happen. But again, start with something easy. If a really easy part for you is, um, let's say, connecting with an old colleague or classmate or someone like that on LinkedIn, great. That's your first task. You go through and do that. And what you might find is that you get a little bit of a, an uplift from having done something that you put on your whiteboard uh, or in your notepad or wherever it is. And that actually gives you the energy to do the next thing. So maybe it's connecting with someone else. Uh, and after you've done a few of those, then you might find that you're pretty energized. And then you might say, tackle the first section of your resume that you need to update. 
Or you might look around, since you're already on LinkedIn, connecting with those people, and find some people who have really interesting looking job titles. And I would separate finding those people and connecting with those people um, in your list of tasks, just because if you set a task for yourself to find and connect with five new people, that has the potential to get really overwhelming pretty quickly. So start by finding three people. And then maybe the following day or even a week later, your task will be to connect with those three people. And then after that, you might find three more people. So it can be a, an incremental process. And those small steps are really what's gonna help you get to the bigger goal. I like a whiteboard for that because I can do some craziness with it at first. I can put, throw everything on there, make it all kinds of messy and weird and brainstormy. And then I can group things together. Oh, this project is gonna dovetail nicely to this project, or um, this is gonna get me into the right mindset to do that, those kinds of things. And then I can make a nice sort of streamlined, simplified version that I see as very, very actionable. Now I live and die by my calendar. So I put everything in there, but if you're uh, in a setting where your calendar is more public, that may not be an option for you. In which case I would say just to go out and buy like a cheap day planner where you can throw everything in as you need to. And then it's just yours to manage and you can do things like um, cross tasks off when you've completed them. Uh, you can scratch them out and move them to different days, depending on kind of when your energy is, all of that kind of stuff. So try that and let me know if it works. But this is really how you maximize luck. You sort of put yourself in the path of luck by setting some goals and really working towards them. What you'll find is that there's sort of a serendipitous thing that begins to happen. And I think it's really a question of simply being ready to see things. So you'll start taking these actions and opportunities are likely to begin to present themselves to you. They were out there anyway, it's not magic, <laughs> but you've put your brain in this place of recognizing those things when you see them. And that lets you really kind of step into that path of luck. And that is, I think, a really good way to move yourself forward in whatever the heck is next for you. All right, I hope that's helpful. Have a good weekend and I will see you all here next week.